feeding and breeding Brazil's deadliest fertile lands. Subscribe now. What's up, Venom Squad? We got some fangs in your face coming, okay? And I don't know why, but I said a bunch of stuff here just a few days ago, and almost everything did a double tap. <laughs> I mean, they were all off the chain, but we had to feed a lot of the Bothrop stuff, and we're pairing up Bothrops right now. This is breeding season for a lot of that stuff. And today we got to pair up the Mugenides. So we're going to do that real quick, and then we're going to show you the fangs in your face. And there are some hum dingers in this one. There is some really good ones. You guys are going to enjoy this. Hey, Jimmy Hargrave. He's a big member of Venom Squad. And he just lost his mother just, just a few weeks ago. Let's get behind Jimmy. Let's show Jimmy some love. Jimmy, I'm sorry for your lost brother. Hey, hashtag Jimmy's mom. Hey, and a big thank you. Hey, we got a new Venom Squad member and a new donator. Hey, thank you so much, Gabriel DeMarco. Hey, welcome to the Venom Squad, Gabriel. Hang in there because we have fun. <laughs> and we're going to have some more fun. Anyways, uh, hey, Roger Cook, Paul Breslin, Wally Tucker, uh, Dan McCarty, and Sean Black. Hey, let me tell you all, Sean Black, what Sean Black did as a member of the Venom Squad. Sean, we love you, Big Daddy. I mean, but what Sean did... Just blows me away. Sean did a $1,200 donation to U.S. ARC. Monthly payments of $100 for a year. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, that is showing support to the reptile community. And I'm going to tell you, I got a lot of people to hit me up and say, thanks for the kick in the butt, Will. We just re-upped our thing with U.S. ARC. We just became members. We just sent it after your rant. We just jumped on board. So... Thank you so much, guys. I mean, that means a lot to us. And what Sean did, whoa, Big Daddy. We we love hearing that kind of stuff. I mean, no one at the Venom Squad is behind us and in this. That's what matters the most. Hey, guys, and we got a brand new shirt out. And I'm going to tell you, it, it is bad to the bone. Wait do you guys see it. So featuring this guy, this big, he's heavy too. He get as big as Maximus, featuring this big Yucatan rattlesnake, the Krolis Zobcon. Um, hey, check my Instagram. Um, the stories, our uh, our community posts, and uh, we'll update you guys. And don't forget, order a new shirt. It's gonna have this big, beautiful Zobcon on it. Well, like I said, guys, this is keeping and breeding and feeding. So <laughs> the fur to lance are the Bopos Mugenite, and I'll tell you, um. Now, we've already fed these. That you're going to see the fangs in your face. Now, I like to feed these Bothrops before I start pairing them up because they got such a strong feeding response. And I'll tell you, especially with the damn Mugenai, you know, they're not really totally, you know, their, their venom can kill each other. I mean, they're, I've had Bothrops kill each other. I mean, they're not, like, resistant to their own venom. They are, they're freaking hot, all right? And if I just take the male and throw him in the female's cage, as soon as I open that door and put him in there, she's going to reach out and bite him. And she's a lot bigger than he is, and she will kill him. So, and you would think that, you know, common sense, a lot of snake breeders often will introduce the female into the male's exhibit, you know, because it's his smell, it's his home, he feels comfortable with the female coming into his range. That doesn't work with these. If I put her in there, she flips out. She cruises around. She never settles down. It doesn't work. So I found that he needs to go into her exhibit. And that's what we've done the past two years in a row. We've been successful breeding Bothros Mugenai. And it's getting to be their season. So I'm going to start pairing them up. So what I got to do is I got to pull her mean butt out of here. And she's always a handful. So I'm going to take her out. Then we're going to put the male in. Miss the cage down so I got a good humidity. And then we're going to put her back in. <laughs> if, if that makes any sense. 
Look at her. Look at her. See, that's what I've already undone my lock. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you guys, you guys need to follow my Instagram, Venom Central. You'll get to see a lot of. I do a lot of day to day stuff. I mean, I just snap photos when I'm in here working and post them on Instagram and little videos um, of stuff eating and me working. But hit, hit my Instagram, Venom Central on Instagram. You'll see a lot of this stuff. But she's a handful. Let me tell you, and I don't even want to platform her because she's. She's in rare form right now. And she just ate, so I'm going to be real careful with her. <laughs> that little devil. She is a mean damn snake. That is for sure. <laughs> yes, we're going to pair you up with your boyfriend. And we're going to set her. No, you don't. We're going to set her down in there real gentle like. There we go. Okay, so we got her out and into the can, and I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna do a light mist on my substrate here. I'm gonna get it right, there we go, on my substrate and my cage walls, okay? Just to jack up the humidity in here. I don't like spraying the snakes themselves. I'll spray the exhibit, jack up the humidity, then I'll pair them up. And believe it or not, the humidity and temperature will push them into breeding but I'll tell you what I've recognized over the past couple years is that they always breed around the same time but it always follows a damn storm system it's either before a storm system or after a storm system that I catch copulation with a lot of the Bothrop stuff so I think that plays a pretty big role in it you know just the, the barometric pressures and things so when I look back at my notes I noticed that last year they were breeding during a damn thunderstorm because because on my log sheets I keep temperature, humidity, time of day, I mean I keep all that stuff, the photo period, I mean I keep everything but I also keep track of the weather, what's going on outside and that plays a factor in what's going on in the snake room. Even though you're controlling temperatures in here and you're trying to mock their temperatures and you're trying to mock their humidity and you're just, but I'm telling you, what's going on outside plays a big factor on your snake's breeding behavior. And that's what I've learned over the years. So that's when I decided to start pairing things up. And that's how I taught myself like, well, let's try it now. Nah, it didn't work, let's split them up and we'll wait till the next system comes through and try it then. So, it's just trial and error, you know? But I do got some secrets that I'm not gonna tell y'all. <laughs> Especially about beating the breeding Bothrops. Okay, now we've got the male in this black tub here, so I'm gonna slide him over and put him in that exhibit. All right. It's funny, because he's just a little guy. But he's a gamer. <laughs> Get in there, buddy. He's a, he's a little baby maker, that's for sure. Come on. And we've got Mugenai, you guys, of all age groups. Because I kept quite a few from the very first breeding. And we just got in some new ones. And I actually, um, we've got still some babies from last year. they got to go out to Medtoxin. And we've got, we've got a bunch of them. Okay, we've got our little male in the cage and he's cruising around and you notice he's gonna keep cruising because he smells her in there okay and uh especially now that i jacked up humidity her smells probably really really heavy in there so he's looking for her. that's what he's doing so we're gonna open this up and i gotta be really careful because i gotta get her out and slide her in and kind of do it with the cage open this is where mistakes are made guys okay this is where you gotta be able to kind of keep one eye this way and one eye this way <laughs> so let's get this done but stand back far enough where he doesn't wind up biting me from behind all right i'm gonna have to platform her because she's she's a little wiry today Don't go that way. Go on. That's home. <laughs> you 
You see that? I mean, he, he, he knows immediately. Female. Time to get busy. <laughs> All right, we're going to wait for her tail to get out of the way. And we're going to close this up. He's already tongue flicking the quick jerk movements. This may not take long at all. They'll probably be populated in the next day or two. All right. As soon as the lights go out, that's when it's gonna start getting busy in here. Watch. <laughs> and I'll sneak in here periodically through the night and see if I can catch it and film it. You know, that's that's kind of what I do. I try to catch it so I can get it on film. But uh and so I can log the dates. I mean, to me, knowing a date that a snake copulated is important because then I can start counting. I can actually keep an eye out for ovulation, then ovulation. I can actually start counting till the day I think that she'll drop the babies. And I'll tell you what's interesting is this female, her first, her first breeding from the day she just did, I mean, from the day that she copulated to the day that she had the babies was six months to the day which I was amazed at. That's that's a really quick gestation for a live bear. And the second year she produced, it was seven months, but she did breed a month early. So, and because that's when the storm systems moved through and it felt right for me. I'm like, you know, it feels right. I'm gonna start pairing them up and they bred. But gestation from, from ovulation was still like six months. So, you know, we're, we're starting to get some data that we can use. So, anyways, we'll try to catch this on camera. But, hey guys, um, the fangs in your face. Where do you see her? Where do you see her? It's, she's just, it's insane. I mean, she comes flying out with her mouth open. She does a double tap. I mean, it's, it's incredible footage. You guys are going to love it. And the damn Arutus crazy off the chain and we got the Arutus breeding we actually captured that on camera too again <laughs> we're gonna have a good year hopefully um so hey guys fangs in your face is coming at you right now fangs in your face all right we're gonna start out feeding them with Genis today <laughs> and that's why i use a hook to open the door Okay, little lady, it's coming, girl. Let her pick up the heat of this rat. There you go, big girl. Oh! Double tap. Yeah, that was nice. She, I think she actually bit it the first time, too. You know, Bothrop's got that thing they do. They'll blow past the prey at them, and they'll turn back mid-strike and hit it from the side. And I think that's what she did. I'll have to watch it in the slow-mo. Very nice. And I'm feeding these guys up real good right now because I'm getting ready to start pairing up a lot of the, a lot of the Mugenai again. It's getting to be their season to start breeding, so, and that's our, one of our big mamas. She's the one that keeps giving us the babies every year, but uh, maybe we'll get lucky and produce them again this year. Okay, we got the male. He's tucked up in this hut. Let's see if we can lure him out here for a strike. Oh, there you go, buddy. He's a fast little booger. I mean, he's a fraction of the size of the female, which is kind of normal with Bothrops, but, but he is lightning quick. All right, guys, we're gonna go in on 
one of the big alternatus this is the Arutu and we're going to have her pick up a heat signature here we'll tap Oh, 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 she hits them hard and fast, boy. Just a ferocious damn snake. That's the Bothrops alternatus or Rhinocerophorus alternatus. We still call them Bothrops. <laughs> In which our Arutus are already all copulated and breeding season's over. They're already done. They've already all bred. So we should hopefully have a good year with the Arutus this year. We've got a couple females that are bred, so maybe we'll produce more. Which I know the labs would be very happy about that. A lot of people want these snakes. There you go, big girl. There's a snack for you. Okay, I've got one of my bigger Rutus in this box here. We're going to see if she just got done copulating. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I was about to say we're going to see if she's hungry. just split her up with the mail from this morning <laughs> man she shot out of there quick there you go girl get a little snack <laughs> well we didn't get a look at her but for a flash <laughs> that was cool all right let's see if our male Arutu is hungry I very seriously doubt that he'll eat but you never know he might surprise us I mean, he's in breeding mode. He's been with like three different females in the past month. But he could use a meal. See that? See that heavy breathing? and That's defensive. He's not hungry. He's not going to eat. Come on, buddy. Take a break and have a sandwich. I'll put you back with the girls. <laughs> Yeah, usually he's bolting out of there like grease lightning to grab a rat. And that's normal, guys. They go off feed this time of year. A lot of the Bothrops males will not eat this time of the year. Even the little juvenile males, the, the one and two year olds, they won't even eat. Just something in them. They got a clock in them. They know it's breeding season. They don't eat. So, we'll move on. We're going to feed some rattlesnakes. Look at this little youngster. This little Zobcon. He can't wait. <laughs> there you go, buddy. <laughs> he just gave it a good pop. Back it up, big guy. All right, there you go. Oh, there you go. Hang on to that one, huh? That a boy. It turned out to be a really pretty rattlesnake. It's a Crowless Zobcon. One of our captive born babies from not the last clutch, the clutch before. 
So, he's a yearling. There you go, buddy. And here is yet another Zabka <laughs> that is pretty anxious. Here you go. Line it up straight. There you go. <laughs> Little boogers. Hang on to it. And I know it all looks the same, guys. And you're probably wondering, why the hell does he have so many of the same snake? But we breed these species for a particular reason. But I always keep back at least 2.2 from each breeding for future breeding colonies. So we we keep a good stock of them. So that's why I got so many of them. <laughs> because if I something happens and I lose, say, an adult pair, I've got three or four more pairs to back it up so I can constantly produce these snakes. So the labs and the different facilities I deal with, there'll always be a supply of them. So very cool, right? They are just a beautiful rattlesnake. Okay, and this is a pretty ornery little yearling male. There you go, Bubba. Oh boy, that was fast. I don't know if I got that in the camera or not. There you go, Bubba. Nice hit. These damn rodent pro rodents, the medium rats, are all varying in sizes right now. Usually they're all pretty much the same, but this last batch I got, they're varying. They go from 90 grams to 130 grams, and that's probably a 130 gram rat. So <laughs> he's going to get a big one today. Okay, we got one more yearling, and this guy's actually a little bit bigger than everybody else. But he's he's all dolled up. He's getting ready to shed, but I think he'll still eat. Hit it again. Here it comes. He's gonna light it up. There you go. He's gonna hang on like a bulldog. At a boy. ready to shed but I'm not gonna miss a meal huh and after he sheds he'll be nice bright yellow and tan he'll be real pretty again he's starting to get them chocolate colors in them and then burnt red colors in them but it's all dolled up right now bonus strike scene all right guys I had a spare mouse and anytime I got something extra, I just throw it to my little baby basiliscus that we had born last season. They're little garbage cans. <laughs> there you go. 
That's cute, ain't it? That's a little girl. That's one of Maximus's baby girls. Just make sure we're all locked down. That ain't locked. <laughs> there we go. Now we're locked. Hey, check out the new t-shirts, guys. Keep, um... Look on our Instagram, Venom Center on Instagram. We'll post them there. Uh, we'll post them on our YouTube uh, community and our YouTube stories. And we'll try to get one on the shorts thing. We're learning how to do that shorts, the YouTube shorts. But anyways, hey, let's get behind Jimmy. Hey, hashtag RIP Jimmy's mom. Jimmy, we're sorry for your loss, brother. Hey, if you're new to the channel, Hit that V logo thing and subscribe now and come on back and check us out at Venom Central. This is Willie. We're checking out. Later.